Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. Thank you for tuning in. In today's video, I will be talking to you about the interview process for the Master of Biotechnology program at the University of Toronto. In my previous video, I went more in depth into the program and since then a few people have reached out asking for more information about how people get interviewed. So that's something I'm going to touch on today. I hope it helps you. And uh, I just also want to say thank you very much for the engagement and love for the previous video. It was really nice to read all of your comments and to talk to a few of you who reached out to me personally via LinkedIn and email. And I look forward to giving back to the community um, in, in the future. So with that, I'm going to get into the video. When you get called in for the interview day um, for Embiotech, which I hope you do, the interview day will be comprised of a few components. The three major ones are the science interview, the business interview, and the research paper summary. Aside from these three main components, the interview day will be comprised of a lunch with yourself, staff and faculty, current students as well, and other in interviewees. And along with that, you have a Q&A session and information sessions as well. So it's a full day, it's a full day event. And once I'm done talking about the science interview and the business interview and the research paper summary, I will give you all some general advice on how you should approach interview day. To that end, I'm going to get started with the science interview. When it's time for your science interview, you will be called to a small room, which will be um, a study room, really. It's a table with seating and also a chalkboard slash whiteboard. Um, in this room, it'll be yourself and two other individuals, likely the director of the program and also a professor from one of the courses, although this may have changed. In the science interview, you're obviously going to be asked science questions. The thing about the science interview is that it's hard to say how you should best prepare um, because it's hard it's you can't predict what kind of things they're going to ask you it, it varies but what I can tell you is this they will prefer to ask you questions about your academic background so the subjects that you studied in your formal education um, so I would recommend there that you that you brush up on your academic background so if you were if you studied molecular bio um, brush up on some of the fundamentals of molecular bio on that, um, on that note, from my experience and from the experience of others, I can also safely say that they, pr they also like to ask questions about organic chemistry and molecular biology. Um, so if you studied something other than those two, I would also recommend, in addition to brushing up on your own subject matter, to also cover the fundamentals of organic chemistry and molecular bio. Nothing too crazy. It's not like they're um, looking for someone with a PhD level of expertise but it's really recommended that you know some of the fundamentals enough to answer some basic questions or have a discussion. Third, the third piece of advice I want to give you for the science interview is this. You want to be very communicative. What they're looking for is not always the person who has all the right answers, but someone who's able to communicate their thought process. So it's not enough to just say the right answer when they ask you a question, and it's not enough to just say that you don't know the answer. What you should do is, irrespective of whether you have the answer or not, talk about your thought process. If you know the answer, say, I think the answer is X, and my reason for that is A, B, and C. What do you think? Similarly, if you get it wrong, you can say, you know what, um, I'm not exactly sure what the right answer is, but I have a feeling that this is it, and I feel this way because of A, B, and C. Both of those paths, I think, are equally valuable in my opinion, and they're going to be impressed with you if you're able to do that. You might be asked one very difficult question like I did, which takes up the whole interview to kind of walk through and, and unpack. Or you might be asked like several um, small questions in different subject areas. It varies. So for that reason, it's really hard to say what the best way is to prepare for the science interview. But yeah, the three pieces, the three keys for the science interview is brush up on your subject matter, brush up on the fundamentals of molecular bio and organic chemistry, and third, be very communicative. Talk, talk, talk. Um, every, all the steps in your thought process and reasoning, articulate them and make them well known. They will help you get to the right answer. They'll hold your hand and take you to the right answer, but they'll, they'll only be able to do that if they know where you're at in your thinking. So talk, talk, talk. I will now move on to the business interview. In the business interview, it's more like any other job interview. Again, you'll be in a room with a panel of two other people, not the same people as a science interview, and they're going to ask you behavioral questions for the most part. 
for behavioral questions, it's going to look something like, you know, tell us about a time when, um, uh, how do you deal with conflict in a group, tell us about yourself, um, these kind of questions. You want to approach these questions using what's called the STAR method, S-T-A-R. The S stands for what is the situation, the T stands for what is the task at hand, the A stands for what is the action you took, and R was what was the result of that action. If you can frame your answers to behavioral questions using the STAR method, um, you'll do well um, for the most part. The business interview is also a great chance to showcase um, just who you are as a person, why you're interested in the program, what your career aspirations are, and things of that nature. One thing I will say is this, and this also this advice also applies to um, your actual application to the program before you even get interviewed. The MBiotic program is kind of like a mix between an MBA and an MSc. Going into this program, you should be well aware that what you'll learn in this program is a mix of science and business, and you should have a very good reason for why you want to learn both science and business. Um, my recommendation is to talk about your experiences working in a business or some of your entrepreneurship experiences if you have any. That's always good, but you want to you want to have a storyline for yourself that you want to market, um, which which communicates why you're interested in M biotech versus just a standard MSc or just a straight up MBA. Um, so that's one thing you want to talk about your why you have an interest in both science and business. With respect to talking about your career aspirations, I will also say here that almost everyone in the program matriculates into the pharmaceutical industry. And so it's, it'll really be in your best interest to have career aspirations of the pharmaceutical industry, or rather in the pharmaceutical industry. Um, as an interviewer, you want to be able to pick applicants that are interested in things that people actually end up doing after the program. And so if everyone after the program is in the farm industry, um, you're going to likely want to pick someone who actually wants to be in the farm industry because then you know you'll be able to satisfy their needs um, should they enter the program. So they're looking for a match and my advice to you is to help them make that matchmaking process easy by talking about what are some jobs you're interested in, in the farm industry. Um, what, what are your career aspirations? Why do you want to be in the farm industry? It helps to have an understanding of what's happening in the industry right now, today. So these are all things that are worth talking about in the in the business interview. Also, the Embiotic program is very team-based and group-based, and there are a lot of presentations. So in this business interview, and I think really this advice just is for interview day in general, you want to you want to really exemplify your team-based and group-based experiences, your ability to present information. So talking about big presentations that you've had in your life is worth talking about. So um, those are all also worth expanding on as well. You want to have good examples, good concrete examples of how well you work in teams and how well you work, work with people and your ability to communicate information. This is all fair game and I think it's worth touching on in this business interview. Aside from all that, what you can expect in the business interview is a standard job interview. Um, yes, so I, I'm going I'm to end the, end this section with that. Next is the research paper summary. Um, this, this I believe, if I recall correctly, was a 60-minute session. And in this session, what you are asked to do is summarize a five-page, on average, five-page research paper in one page, in, in, in one page. So kind of like making an abstract. Um, you're given 60 minutes. You're going to be in a room with four, with uh, three other interviewees. You're all going to be in one corner of the room. You'll all have a computer, and you'll be asked to complete this assignment. Um, this one is hard to comment on. Um, myself and my fellow classmates, none of, no one really knew why they did this. Why did it, Why they did this exercise? One theory was that it was to see how well you follow instructions because you have to create an account on the computer and follow some steps before you do the before you summarize the paper. Another another theory is that they're looking to see how you work well under pressure. And another theory is that it's just to test your ability to comprehend, digest information and to summarize it. Um, all I can say here is that it's, it's also kind of difficult to, to prepare for. Um, some people may choose to practice summarizing papers beforehand. You can do that. That's fair game if, if you think that's going to help you. Um, I personally did not did not really practice for this. I think it's worth maybe just 
you know, if you've been out of school for a while, just take a look at some research papers, familiarize yourself with the, the way that research papers are laid out so you know where to find information. Um, I think I think those kind of exercises are always helpful. So um, even if you don't prepare for it, I think it's good. I think it's useful to know that this is on the horizon if you get called in for an interview. So that's the science interview, the business interview and the research paper summary. Now, I'm just going to give some general advice now on interview day. From when you get into the school for interview day up until the point that you leave the school and your interview day is over, you want to be on your best behavior. What that means is that you're professional, you are friendly and approachable, you're communicative and social with the people around you and you're interested in the people but also the program and you're just generally enthusiastic about being there. Um, those I'd say what are some of the key qualities you want to strive for when you present yourself at interview day. Um, even when you're not in the interview, like the science and business interview, and when you're when you're not summarizing that research paper, the time outside of those three sections, again, be on your best behavior. Talk to the people around you. Just show them that you are someone who will succeed in the corporate pharmaceutical industry or whatever. Um, they still they still assess you even when you're not in these three core sections. Um, people, the staff and faculty who are having lunch with you. The current students who are answering your Q&A questions, they're also assessing just who you are as a person, even though this is not an actual interview section. So be on your best behavior the whole way through, and I think, and I think you'll do well. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave that there. Um, along with all this advice, just general interview advice that you find online is also fair game. So you know, be prepared with that as well. Um, I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to conclude this video. I want to say that if you have any further questions or comments, use the comment section below. If you want to reach out to me for some one-on-one -on -one advice or coaching, um, reach out to me via LinkedIn, connect with me on LinkedIn, or send me an email, and I'll, and I'll respond. So with that, thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and thank you for your just engagement. I appreciate it, and uh, I'll see you later. Thanks.